Welcome everybody to Crossing the Line with Greg Heim, my mother's favorite podcast. Coincidence? It's not actually, you would think. You would think it would be. Uh, each week here, we try to give you the latest on the economy, housing, and everything else you need to know to feel informed. Today is April 1st, April Fool's Day. Um, I'm not a big prankster like that, so we're not going to make a joke. But as you know, we try to put a song to every episode. Today is our 19th episode. So what song do you think I chose? Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it, but Ray mentioned the... The 80s song 19 about Vietnam, because that was the average age, I believe, of the soldiers that died. But I didn't pick that one. Uh, now, the first thing that jumped to my head, and since it's April 1st, which is a crazy day, do, do you want to guess? You don't have to. I can't think of anything. Well, welcome to our 19th Nervous Breakdown. And my buddy, Eric Gordon, I don't think he listened, but he's the biggest Stones fan I know. Um Yes, I'm still Greg Heim. That hasn't changed. They haven't replaced me yet. Uh, Chief Economist, <laughs> Economist here at Brown Harris Stevens, at least this week, um, and author of The Line, the blog that we rip off and just make it longer and, and uh, put some funny make em ups in it, and then we have a podcast. Yes. Uh, a special welcome to new listeners out there. Uh, it seems like we do have some new listeners because the ratings went up uh, last week, so that's good. I appreciate that. Please subscribe to this and all the great podcasts on the more network we have hannah here uh Hi everyone with her soundboard she hasn't lost privileges yet let's not put them to sleep before i talk to sleep. okay well. we're just getting ramped up all right cue the metallica for when we know oh wait we can't afford the rights to that stuff and we have ray and lena sitting in the comfy chairs yes it, it, you can't see but trust me we have we have chair envy on that one um how was the weekend everybody was it good it was good the for, weather was beautiful for those of you that celebrated the easter holiday i hope you had a good one um yeah it was it was nice to be with family yesterday and my aunt makes a hell of a meal the lasagna i made lasagna as well was too outstanding much. i made too much lasagna. i ate too much lasagna so that that mm. goes hand in hand um and we're here at our beautiful home in Studio 1873, tastefully decorated by our good friends at the Everset. Again, always trying to be informative, concise, entertaining, and edgy all at the same time. If you want to email us, ctl at bhsusa.com, we'd love, and we appreciate all the feedback that we do get. So please keep it coming. This beautiful set here at Studio 1873 is brought to you by The Everset. The Everset provides full-service staging and furniture rental solutions in the New York area. For more information, please visit us at staging.theeverset.com or email us at staging at theeverset.com to request a free proposal. All right, we'll get right to our line items. Sure. Of which there were really only one and a half, basically. Very slow week, um... Stock market closed Friday for Good Friday. I tried to find out why, but I couldn't really find, other than it's always been closed for Good Friday. Hmm. Um, not a, not the biggest week. But we did have, if you're only going to have one bit of data released in a week that wasn't the jobs report, this would be the one. Yes, it's the Fed's favorite measure of inflation. Um, core PCE rose 2.8% over the past year. Yeah, unlike parents with children, the Fed admits they have a favorite inflation gauge. And that is the Core Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, or PC, Core PCE, to his or her friends. Um, it rose 0.3% in February and was up 2.8% over the past year, both in line with expectations. Couldn't really gauge the stock market's reaction because the stock market was closed uh, that day. By comparison, CPI, who gets all the love in the media, but not from the Fed, was up 0.4% in February and 3.8% over the last year. So the, you look at the annual increase in the two numbers, it's a percent difference, percent higher in core PCE. Uh, I mean, it's core CPI. A lot of that has to do, again, with the fact that core PCE is a much more complete number because it tracks all the spending and it can better adjust and weight each sector. You know, it's one thing to go look at the price of Ron Guidry bobbleheads or mugs or soundboards, but you also have to figure out what percentage 
are people spending of their income on these things? Right. Hopefully not much of those things. Um, PCE does a better job because they're actually getting the spending, complete spending package. So that it's good that it met expectations. 2.8% year over year. Remember the Fed is looking for 2%. So you'd say, oh, it's 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 getting close. It's it's good. And if you look over the past year, that annual increase has fallen from four point eight to two point eight percent. Not too shabby, you know. That's 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 an improvement. Um, the the thing is though that they're they're trying to get to two percent again. We made the joke about the red zone in the NFL a couple of weeks ago that it's going to be the hardest part is to get it. It doesn't have to get it below two percent because they've kind of like got a little lazy with this and they're basically like you know what as long as it's hovering around two percent we can live with that uh you know and this is everybody is looking at this data waiting for their rate cuts and as tom petty once sang so beautifully the waiting is the hardest part i I have that riff in my head miss tom petty so much uh but you know they're in the red zone they need to get the ball close to the end zone and uh then, then, then we can think about rate cuts again. We talked about this extensively last week. Maybe they do one in June to shut everybody up for a while and then do two after the election. We'll see. They'll, they'll always say, look, we're basing this on data coming in. And based on this data, I don't think their trajectory has changed, if, if they have one uh, yet. Uh, so that, again, is good as news. But there was a really good bit of news in this, in this report, and that was about spending. The, so, the, again, we mentioned that this is the the price index we're looking at is the core personal consumption expenditures price index. Well, personal consumption expenditures or consumer spending, as you know, non-economists would call it, uh, actually rose 0.8% in February. So that is good news. You know, we, yes, we so saw a, a similar increase in retail sales. Again, that report is not as complete as this one. That's why we said that we were all excited. We had CPI and retail sales two weeks ago, but then we were going to forget about, about all that when we got this. But they're both showing similar trends, if not the same exact data. And as we all remember, consumer spending is 70% of gross domestic product, which was uh, the final estimate for the fourth quarter came out last week, and GDP was raised to just under 3.5%. Unbelievable, considering um, you know the inflation has crushed the consumer, the amount of debt the consumers have racked up. So that's that's good news that they keep spending. So here's the next question that that Ray has, I'm sure. No, that we we would all wonder. Well, how much do consumers actually spend? Right? Because it's a good you know. it's a good question. So they they actually give you a seasonally adjusted annual rate of spending. So based on February's numbers it would be $15.7 trillion this year um, if it continued at the same pace. Two-thirds of that is on services. A third of that is on goods. We don't know how much of that is on guitars and books. Uh, we'd, you know, we'd have to ask Hannah for some receipts, and then maybe we'd figure that yeah, out. Yeah, just my consumption alone, like my spending, it's it's quite a hefty number, but who's to say with all of the readers? But well, I'm trying to keep the guitar industry alive. That's It's just you, I, I, it's for sure. I, You know, the rock guitar, as Pete Townsend has said, is, is dead. So well, hopefully he's wrong, but Pete's still alive, so that's good. He just did a, a Tonight Show. So, yes. so. And he's teasing a Who farewell tour. How uh, many farewell tours are there going to be? They started in the 80s. Before they really say farewell. And I don't want them to say farewell. I will go see them. I don't care if they, you could you could really just put their their, their coffins up there. I would pay money to go see it because it's a Who. I, don't, I would still the next, rock. The next farewell tour will be like, we really mean it. Now. No, they're really gone. They, they, yeah. Yeah. It, I hope not because I'm running out of bands to go see. I'm still waiting for Aerosmith to reschedule their farewell tour. Uh, hopefully they will. So the takeaway again of this is is inflation's moving in the right direction, and and consumers keep finding ways to spend money. So that's good. Uh, as we mentioned with the the uh, labor market data, wages are growing faster than prices. So that that is good news. We've seen food prices flatten out a bit, which is good news. The problem is gas prices have gone up a little bit. So. This, this is now the hottest bit of economic data. But next week, people are going to forget about this because the March jobs numbers come out. So that's 
that will be interesting. So that is our, our first item. And I believe yes. now it's time to take a break for this very important message. What do you really need to know about buying or selling a home? First, it's serious business and it's complicated. There's a lot of money on the table and emotion too. You need an agent who knows the ropes. So, whether you're buying or selling your home, work with professionals who have a mastery of the craft. Um, as per Greg's request, let's just bring it back with some applause from the audience, shall we? No, those are actual people in here clapping. What are, they, we don't use sound effects. Brought to you from a live studio audience. <laughs> Of two, um, of two people here at Studio 1870. <laughs> uh, should we talk about the um, falling mortgage rate for? Why not? We all need a, we all need a little bit of happiness, and uh, you know, the, for the first time in three weeks, mortgage rates went down. Uh, they averaged 6.79 percent, and again, this is 30-year conforming rates. A certain person, I won't mention his name, Steve Kligerman, would tell me I, I should be quoting jumbo rates, but. I have no comment. This is overwhelmingly the largest rate used in the country, the most important rate. Um, I guess the thing, the big takeaway other than being happy, rates dip lower. That's good. What have we learned in the last couple of weeks? Guess what? The mortgage rate goes up and down all the time, even when the Fed isn't doing anything. That it does. We're so obsessed about Fed cuts, and when's Fed going to cut? We want them now. It's killing the real estate industry. But while we're just waiting... Life is happening all the time and rates are going up and down, right. which is why if you're a home buyer out there and, and you know, you really want to stay on top of this, you've got to look at it almost on a daily basis or at least work with a mortgage professional that can update you when rates move because then you have a chance. And um, that's, that's the important thing because there's two ways, obviously, to get housing more affordable. One is to have lower mortgage rates. The other one is to build more housing. And uh, home building is ramping up a bit, but we still have such low supply in so many of our markets in this country that it's, it's frustrating for people. And it's not just the Gen Zers, it's, it's everybody buying a house is facing the challenge of much higher payments than they would have a couple of years ago. Uh, that will continue to change over time. And I think that's the message we tried to give when we were talking about Gen Zers and home buying that Things change. They don't stay the same forever. Just like 3% three, 3 rates didn't stick around forever, these rates will change, especially as inflation continues to get more under control. All right, so that that was like a very quick line. Yeah, I threw that mortgage stuff in, just like a happy into the weekend yeah, nice kind of holiday thing. Just like, let's enjoy things. Right. Uh, maybe buy a home on, over the weekend or something like that. I mean, that'd be nice, but, you know. We don't, we don't have spare cash for that. Do we have a budget for... I was aiming for, like, I hope the weather's nice, you know, but... It's just the wind, though. I mean, you look at sunny, and then you go outside, it's so windy. I don't know. Yeah, I got some. I'm old. Greg has a problem with the wind. And you know what? I don't blame him. As King Crimson once sang, I talk to the wind. Okay. <laughs> you literally have a... But, but wind doesn't talk back. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're you're full of music knowledge. Progressive rock right. knowledge, too. You like King Crimson, right, right? No? Oh, you do? Okay, that's good. Um, All right, well, I guess it's time for the lineup. Yes, maybe maybe this is really happy news. Like the mortgage rate yes. going down was like that was the appetizer, your shrimp cocktail maybe. But here comes your steak or, or vegan, whatever Ray's eating. Um, but, yeah, what do we got? Uh, the S&P 500 closed with the strongest first quarter performance um, in five years. And that, that is good news. And the... It closed at a record high, so did the Dow. Mm -hmm. And for the first quarter of this year, the S&P was up 10.2%, the Dow 5.6%, and the NASDAQ 9.1%. So that that's just three months. Yeah. That right. That is worth celebrating. <laughs> yes, I'll take all the credit. I'd like to thank my agent, you know, my family. Uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting too, if you look at the last couple of years, so we're having a great year this year so far, it's quarter over. Uh, let's look at the past five years, annual returns of the S&P 500. Last year, 26% up. 
22, 18% down. 21 up 29%, 20 up 19%, and 19 up 30%. That's pretty good returns. And uh, it begs the question that, is the stock market too happy? Mm. I mean, a lot of this is NVIDIA. NVIDIA was up 82.5% in the first quarter. Uh, for those of you that didn't buy it, don't worry, I didn't buy it either. Uh, but uh, it, And again, a lot of this has to do with the economy managing to do very well at a time when inflation is coming down. But it does, it does you, do, you do wonder. And look, stocks are all about the future. You buy a stock because it's going to go up in the future, not what it did before. So I don't know. And the question is, if they don't get their rate cuts in June, are they going to turn around and get a little pessimistic? I don't know. But I think that's that's the, the concern. Uh, but companies are making money. People are spending money. Companies are still hiring people. Uh, the unemployment rate is still very low. Weekly jobless claims fell again. They just keep defying all these layoff announcements. Uh, so I, I, I guess let's just be really happy that maybe we can retire one day because of this now, you know, nice. Nice. yeah, you got a long way to go. Fingers um, crossed. Thank you. I, I have a long way to go and I'm, I don't, what would we do without this show? We just talk to ourselves or God forbid I'd have to talk, you know, my wife would have to hear all this stuff and she would just walk We'd out of the talk room. talk amongst each other. Anyway. Probably something like that. No audience involved. Well, who knows with AI, the way it's going, I may get replaced anyway at some point. AI, Greg and Hannah do the show and we're on a, you know, we're in retirement. I I, I guess it's not too early for an existential crisis. So thank you. You know, for that. I, I, we're trying to bring exciting things to, to a not, not very exciting week. We have one more tidbit from last week. Yes. Um, it's not so exciting, but not the worst news in the world. Uh, new home sales eased in February, um, so this would suggest an uneven recovery of, you know. Well, the term eased means fell slightly, right? right. That's that's so it was 03 percent. Could it be just a one month thing? Um, certainly possible. I mean, new home sales have benefited from the fact that there are no existing home sales to buy, so and the prices have come down, which is also good news uh, for buyers out there. I mean, economists were looking for a, a slight gain, so this is not great news. But again, one month, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. New sales, though, are counted when contracts are signed, not when they close. So this is sort of almost real time data based on mortgage rates and how they impact. Now you remember, existing home sales were up pretty healthy the first two months of this year, but when and those are based on closing when they close. But pending home sales, which are contract signs for existing homes, uh, were down big in January. So that so that maybe this shouldn't be a surprise because you know the rates started increasing at the beginning of the year. Um, we've seen sort of an uneven uh, drift lately, but after a big decline at the end of twenty three, they started to go up again. So maybe we shouldn't be surprised that at some point that was going to impact new home sales, sure. if not just a little bit. Um, as I mentioned before, the home building data was very strong. Permits, housing starts, home builder sentiment, all looking good. So hopefully, you know, we desperately need more housing. It's, it's a crisis that we have. We've also talked about how many of the single family homes have been bought up by hedge funds right. that are renting them out. And that people need rental housing, but that takes away a lot of for sale inventory. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully the building momentum will continue, uh, you know, because when, when you have a labor market this hot and wages are rising faster than prices, you know, there are people going to be out there looking to buy and, and have accepted higher rates. It's just maybe just finding the right home, which can take a long time. It took me a long time. Uh, but that's a lot of real estate agents would just say I wasn't serious enough. That's why. Mm. But, you know, me trying to wait for the right moment to buy. Yeah. So I, I picked decisions. 2006, right, in the, right before home prices tanked, ended up with a 6.5% mortgage rate, which is only a little bit below where they are now. So, look, if that rate was good enough for me, it should be good enough for other people. You know what I mean? Very true. You're going to have a short memory. Well, well, that's the show. Before we close, I have a very special announcement. We have the most special of guests 
lined up for next week. Bess Friedman, the big boss lady will be here. The numero uno honcho. Very excited. Uh, she's gonna make the big trip from one floor above us and and be in studio. So I'm excited to have Bess on the show. I, I hope she doesn't yell at me because when she started her show, I was like the third guest. So she's, you know, but I figured she's busy. So we'll, we'll hear, yes. you know, Bess is all over the media talking about the housing right. market. Yes. So you won't have to tune to CNBC or one of those channels. You, you'll have it right here. And uh, we'll talk about all kinds of things. Me and Bess have interesting conversations about music uh, and other things. So we look forward to that and we hope everybody has a great week. And again, be sure to like and subscribe to all the fantastic podcasts on the more network and i said that very slow and deep on purpose very dramatic i'm working on it. it's better than the cookie monster voice it's nice and soothing <laughs> way to say sure. goodbye. have a great week everybody we'll see you next week <laughs>